this is this is important that we do that we do with urban nerds because we take our kids from the urban areas that we that we're from and expose them to this kind of stuff where some of these kids coming from Philly, uh, North Philly, Southwest Philly, where I'm from, Camden, they'll never really be able to come to these places. Right? They'll never have the opportunity to come to these places. And if, if a lot of our kids are talented. But that's why we created Urban Nerds, to give them a different outlook on life and expose them to things that they normally wouldn't be exposed to. I mean, you know, take them off the block, take them around all that negativity. So now they're around here with like a lot of smart kids from around the world. They get to showcase their talent. They get to showcase their talent. They get to meet people and network. And these, these kids that's not on the corner, that's not doing negative stuff. I mean, this is where the Geek Squad, the Nerd Revival, the smart kids, the kids that actually move uh, the world today. So this is this, this is this is why I did this. I mean, you know, I used to be part of the problem. Now I'm working every day to be part of the solution to save uh, children's lives. So again, you got over here, you got them um, already in, in the end game tournament over here. These guys playing now over there if you look over here you got those guys playing up on the stage and when you know a lot of kids where I'm come from man they don't have this kind of stuff man so instead of me complaining about stuff I just decided to go do something about it you know what I mean you know offline let's go do something about it with the children like I said on the stage there you got them on the stage again like I said Y'all see, y'all see, Urban Nerds, Urban Nerds, we out here, we out here doing the work. We out here make, trying to make it happen, changing lives one child at a time, man. We just out here just doing, doing, doing the best. Make sure you guys is out here, y'all supporting Urban Nerds, and know that when you when you are donating, you're not just donating for nothing. We out here really doing work, man. Y'all can check our community tabs, some of the pictures that we put in, but I'll come back later on tonight when it really get packed in here, all right? Peace. And that's what they had the graphics was like eight bits, four bits, four bits, and then they switch. And when you uh, when you shoot the uh, bullet, it would bounce all over the screen. And when you hit the tank, it would spin around. And then I went to my homie house, and he had Coleco bits, and they was playing Burger Time. And I saw the graphics on that joint. I was like, yo, like what is this? What is Burger Time? Because you remember Atari Twenty Six Hundred was yes. And then they had, uh, remember Deep Dub? Uh, well, what was the name? What was, what was the name of that one uh, game when you was in the jungle? Pitfall. Pitfall. They had Pitfall, and that was on like uh, in television. Pitfall. And all those games. That was on Atari too. Yep. Yeah, but the graphics was way better on those other games, right? So then you knew you was getting money if you had the handheld game, the one you could uh, play the Galaxy. Like you walked around, it's like '84, '85. You got Galaxy and Centipede. And um, they had the one with the ball on it. So everybody had access, like you were saying. We had access to them in the, in the stores, like with the big games, but to have them in your house, like your parents could afford an Atari, that could be go visit all that other stuff. Ain't too many people had big dub in the house back in the day. In Burger Time, they had this Pac uh, Man. Pac Man, and I forgot the name of the mother. Uh, uh, you had Atari 5200 came out. Mm -hmm. And there was another one after that, wasn't it? Who was one that it was two versions of Atari. I don't know the other number, 72, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. And, then, and then you had the, like, the Nintendo came out. And that's when everybody had like Kung Fu. Remember Kung Fu? He went, ah. <laughs> and, But the one game that we had back in the day when I was a kid, um, it was a game, it was a game called Russian Attack. I remember they that. They played that inside the arcade. And, 19, and then they had a game we used to play in 1986 called 1942. The airplane joint. The airplane game. And then I remember they, they brought them to, I think, it was the first the first Nintendo. They brought them to, a Russian attack was a classic. But the most classic game of my era, me at 48, my era was Double Dragon. Double Dragon. I'm going to tell you the classic game was Double Dragon, but the one game, I never no, Double Dragon was number two. Zelda, the gold, the gold tape was number one. Zelda. There was Zelda, Double Dragon, Mega Man, Mega Man. Mario. And the Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers. And right after that, your other favorite ones was like Akari Warriors, remember them? Yeah. And all those games. But that's that's me, the OG, right? Because Zelda was the all-time freak. That was the first game I think I played where you had to read the book. To go to all the different levels and boards, right? And that was, you know, but 
As time got, as, as time went on, I got older, I got out of the game. And the, tech, the, the technology now, it, it, it just advanced. Because I think I got out once, with, once the Nintendo brought the pad out. The pad, you be running on the pad, and they had the Olympic, the Olympic game joint. But since then, it's been about 40 years now, 35 years, and here we are. Here we are. We're in the game and set. So I, I say that. I say that to my brother bring it back, OG, OG Urban Nerds. Signing off. <laughs>